I don't know. I just don't know. You've been here before, right? When you look at a spool of filament and you're trying to debate whether or not this is gonna last the entire print, right? Because there's nothing worse than realizing that somewhere over the night, your filament ran out and sometimes it's a gamble, right? Sometimes it goes off a little bit and you really just don't want your filament running out in the middle of a print. And if you're anything like me, you probably end up with spool after spool after spool of filament that it, it, it could do a decent amount, but you feel like it just doesn't, it's not gonna last the entire print. And then you end up with all these spools. And what do you do with it? Well, today we're going to explore a product called the Sunlu Filament Connector. And their product is meant to solve exactly this, to join these spools of filament together so you can wind them back up or you know, put the different colors together. And the reality is, is that there have already been a couple reviews on this product um, and they've been mixed. However, I had a chance to really work with it for a while now and I realized that the product does in fact work, but it requires certain tips. And if you don't follow these tips, you're just not gonna have good results. So I'm gonna take you through these tips today and hopefully this product will work for you as it works for me, right after this. Welcome to the show that sets your mind free. Tech and gadgets, 3D surprise. Welcome back to another episode of Captain Creativity. I am your host, David Merrill. For those of you who are returning and haven't yet subscribed, now's the chance. <laughs> anyway, let's begin with unboxing the Sunlu filament connector. In the box, it, it, there's really very few things. It's essentially the filament connector itself. You also have a power cord over here, and then there's a bag of these connectors. Essentially, what we're going to do today is we're gonna take two ends of the filament and we're going to join them together using this connector uh, device over here. It is rated for five volt, two amps. Let's begin first with tip number one. Tip number one is I highly recommend that you get yourself a five volt, two amp USB adapter. So you could, you know, just plug in the wire like so. I urge you not to put this into your laptop or your computer because you don't really know how much of the power it's going to deliver through that USB port. Sometimes the computer could go into power saving mode and then it's just gonna take a long time to heat up. That is tip number one. Okay, first thing about the connector, uh, once you apply power, you'll notice that there is a power button. You press it, and at this point, the temperature is going to start to rise. You'll notice over here that you have the ability, there's like a little play button, and when you click that, you can actually change through these up and down arrow keys, the different uh, filaments. So you could go to ABS, PETG, PA, PCL, and then back to PLA again. Basically, in order for it to set it, you just let it blink and it, it, it goes back to where it is. Now, if you feel like the setting for the filament that you have is not appropriate and you need to adjust it, you can actually go press the play button again and you can change the temperature, okay? And then you go up and down over here. Now I feel this is fine, so we'll just let it go. And as you can see, it does take about a minute or so for the connector to warm up. So you do have to give it about a minute to get to where it needs to be. So let's begin by setting up our first connection. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take two pieces of filament, as you can see over here. And essentially what you have to do, and this is now tip number two, is you wanna go ahead and you wanna cut the edges off the filament at a very acute angle. So what do I mean by that? Uh, basically, you know, there's flat, 
and then there is doing it on an angle, and then there's an acute angle. So the more of an angle, the better it is. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it like that. And you can notice over here, it's got a nice little overhang now. And I'm gonna wanna do the exact same thing on the other one. Same idea, an acute angle is the best way to go. And the reason for that is, is that it will give the most overlap when put together. And then that will be better for the few to establish. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to take out these filament tubes, kind of like a joiner. And we're gonna go ahead and put one end into one side and we're gonna put another end into the other side. Now, when we do this, what's very important is that you must line it up so that one overhangs over the other run. You really want it that one overhangs over the other, and that's actually perfect. And then once that's done, you're ready to begin. Now, my tip number three is that I usually will tell you that the amount of time on the default profile is not enough. I like to usually have it starting up when it's already powered down. I want those few seconds while it's warming up to contribute to the total amount of time that it's kind of cooking and connecting. I'm going to put this down now right in the middle. And you can see there's this little silver spot. Do not touch this spot when this thing is on or after it's on because it will get very, very, very hot. Just so that this doesn't kind of get in my way, I'm just gonna cut off the other end here just so that I could demonstrate this a lot easier. Okay. Okay, I'm just verifying that the two pieces are overlapping, which they are because I don't want that to not happen. Okay, and I push it down. Now at this point, I turn it on. And so this is what I'm talking about. If it's already at a powered off state, I like to just put it in there and that way it will just kind of warm up. I'm just gonna snip this other line just so you can get a, I can get a better visual here. Anyway, so now it's uh, heating up. And during this process, that little extra time of heating up is going to give it just a little bit longer to cook. And I found that this is much better in getting the solid. Now, you may not want to wait that whole extra minute if you prefer to heat up your filament after it reaches the desired temperature then my suggestion will be to leave it cooking for just three more seconds, because those three more seconds will actually give it just enough extra bake time that it will, good, that it will give it a good um, connection. Now again, this could be possible that based on, I'm use, I've been using this with Sun Lu filament and E-Sun filament, it's quite possible that you may not have to do this on different filaments, but if you feel like you're not getting your connections, then my recommendation will be to let it cook for a little bit longer or adjust the temperatures. All right, now reaching 185. And once it reaches that temperature, it's gonna beep a few times, letting you know it's ready. Okay, so that means now it's ready. And you could certainly turn it off at this point if you want to let it cool down. But you do have to remove it. Do not leave it in here. I have found that if you leave it in here, it could overcook. And the other tip that I'm gonna to refer to is when you're pulling this off, move it either off or in my opinion, just bring it to the edge and let it cool. You definitely wanna let it cool because there is some heat that creeps up the tube and there's a very weak part at the end of the tube here and here and they become very, lack of a better word, very soft and very gooey. And you don't want that to happen because then you're gonna have another place that you're gonna have to wane up. Now, the next thing that you're gonna do 
is this is actually the slicer to get the piece of plastic off of the filament. So you kind of load it into here and there's a, it's, it actually snaps in on both ends. That's how you'll know you got it in there. And then I, I just, I, you could do it one time. I kind of like to do it a few times. So I go one, two, three, four. And then basically there should be now a slit on the bottom right over here. And all you do is you take off the plastic. There we go, I got it. And look at that, that is like perfect. Look, <laughs> that is really, that, <laughs> okay. So that is really, really on, all right? That is really like, I'm trying to pull it apart. I can't pull it apart and it's consistent. This is gonna have no problem feeding through the nozzle. Now I'm gonna show you the other way that you could do this. And I'm gonna just quickly do it one more time and I'm gonna show it to you as if like we're gonna wait till it gets to 185, right? Here, we'll put, we'll put it down, we'll wait till it gets to 185 and then I'll just show you. So again, acute angle. Now we're gonna take that tube again, put it over. Okay, put the other side in. Okay. All right, push them together, get them into the middle. Make sure you have that overlap. As you can see, that a little bit of blue and a little bit, almost like they kind of create that yin-yang type of uh, a pr uh, look to it, right? As they come together. And what we're gonna do now is, see, so now, right now, it's at 185, right? What I would do in this scenario is you're now putting it in in a ready, hot to go, ready to go situation, right? At this point, you could just put it right in the middle, okay? All right, and close it up. and then wait for it to go. See how quick that is. See, once it's up, it's, it's really quick to go. But now you're gonna wait one, two, three, and now you could go ahead and take it off. But same idea here again. If I'm not careful, see this area and this area is gonna be very gooey. You could kind of see it and it will basically come apart on you. So I'm just gonna let it rest there. Give it, a, give it 30 seconds if you have to, but just give it, give it time to cool itself down because you do not wanna hurt the two ends of the, the connectors there, all right? Patience is a virtue. <laughs> okay, and once you feel like it's cooled down enough, snap it in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see how this comes out. This one was okay, not as good. Maybe you didn't have enough time to really kind of bake. It, it, it will work though. It does still work, it has the strength. It may not have been as perfect, which is why I've been more of a fan of letting it kind of build up some of that extra temperature. So I say, you know, start it up, get it going, put it in, and then give it as, it, as the temperature is building up, go ahead and put it in. Again, my initial way definitely has always worked for me every single time. I've never had any issues doing it through that first tip. The second tip is like I said, you know, the, the, not the second tip, but the tip of waiting a little extra will go a long way. And usually don't just pull it right out after you hear those three beeps. Definitely gonna need to wait a little bit and you're gonna definitely want to take advantage. Here are my thoughts on this. The Sunlu filament connector does work. 
But as I mentioned, there's a learning curve and I'm hopeful that with these tips and some practice, you'll be able to be a pro at this. Is it an out of the box, idiot proof type of device? No, not at all. I totally recommend this for every classroom and every maker space. I think it's great. There are some other like open source solutions out there or some DIY type of filament connector solutions. But I think this one is gonna give you the most consistent results um, as long as you go by those tips that I just mentioned. My biggest concern is the bag of connectors and what happens when you run out. I mean, they do give you a lot, so it's gonna take some time till they run out. You know, I'm just a little nervous that the price to buy more of these is gonna be really kind of like, you can't justify it. So, you know, maybe you'll just do it when you buy your next roll of filament. Um, or maybe there will be some third party people who sell it on Amazon for really cheap or Sun Lu will sell it directly for very, very cheap. So I hope these are not gonna cost a lot. The thing that I would recommend to Sun Lu about this is, and I don't know if this is something that would solve the problem, but since the heat seems to dissipate, uh, not dissipate, but to spread beyond the uh, filament connector, I wonder if a wider uh, version of this would have been better uh, so that it could really hold into place those gooey edges on both sides, unless it's going to go wherever it is, no matter how far the tube is. I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments, if that's even a good idea. It's just something that I thought about. But like I said, if you follow the tips and you do a little practice with it, you're gonna get it right on the money each and every single time. You just have to be aware of that. Oh, and most importantly, don't forget to buy that power adapter. It's, it's a little annoying that you do have to go get one. I don't know why they didn't include it for best results. Anyway, I wanna thank everyone for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much and happy printing.